My father started this company the year I was born. He started in the forests right behind us, planting trees. He helped plant the first crop of forests. We're now harvesting the third one. My parents brought me uh, to New Zealand. I was uh, just turned 16, um, so I went straight to work in Murupara um, back in 63. I was uh, meat hunting on the weekends and uh, saved a deposit for a Clark 664 log skidder. We got a loan that got us started into heavy logging machines. Uh, we progressed from there to uh, full-size skidders, big log haulers, heavy Komatsu bulldozer with winch and uh, arches. We were some of the early contractors in Kaingaroa Forest, but before that we were the first in Tarawara Forest to pull logs. We had a near fatal accident for Jacob, my main man at the time. He uh, was felling trees and uh, one of them slid over, over his body. It hit me in the back. I went down face first and it just kept sliding over the top of me. Picked up my legs and laid them on my back because I'm laying face down, right? Blasted, dislocated one hip and just smashed one side to bits. I was paralysed. My pelvis was kind of basically knackered. It was uh, very traumatic for his mother and I. We, we didn't know which way to go, or what, to, what to think or do. Before the accident, I was a, a very mild mannered, smiley, sporty guy. But after the accident, something seriously changed in me. I really was driven by Utu. I wanted things put right. I wanted revenge on a situation that um, took a lot from the people I cared for. So I had a plan. I said to my father, we're one of hundreds of contractors and we're all going broke slowly, but I'm really good at computing. Let's merge computing and traditional forestry and differentiate ourselves in the market. The merge of cutting edge IT and forestry really worked. We became the first forest contractor in New Zealand with an IT department. We went from 20 employees up to 170 over the space of three years. I think it was about 18% of New Zealand's total forest output went through our Dad and Dave Common Garden Variety Company. Revenge is a really powerful, effective driver, but it's not a positive one. If you stood in our way, we destroyed you. Our staff turnover was horrendous, but I didn't give two craps. I had a job to do, and no one and nothing was gonna stop me from pulling this off. When it was a small family business, it moved into the late 90s, early 2000s, and it grew into quite a massive beast of a company. Went really corporate and really quite, almost like a military way of managing. A lot of egos involved, and it was quite a hard environment. Back then I felt like there was always a higher power and the workers were the workers. For myself I was a bit shy of speaking my own opinion, like freely. One person that used to treat us like we were in the army, kind of, you know, swearing at us and stand us all in a row up against the wall and like, you know, we were ready to be gunned down kind of thing. <laughs> We've got a lot of really talented people here with great ideas but always too scared to say anything in case the boss didn't like their answer. I looked back on what we had created and I wasn't the least bit proud. In fact, I was ashamed. I didn't want to be that negative, hard driving company anymore. There was no pleasure in that, no satisfaction. I realized we had to try something else. Anyone that's worked in forestry will know there's a lot of backstabbing. There's a lot of he said, she said stuff. So Jacob was empowering us with, okay, if you're gonna hear someone talk about someone, you either call them out for it, or you just say, I don't wanna hear it and walk off. So people got braver and started to say, well, no, you don't tell that to that person. I don't wanna hear it. And the more people that did that, those negative people have no one to feed their crap to. So it then becomes an environment they no longer fit in. They um, kind of stand out like a, a sore thumb when they're the only ones being negative. And I think we're in such a positive environment now that 
It's not appealing to people like that. Since I've come back, the vibe's different. All the weeds have been pulled out. I enjoy coming to work now. I had a fleet of managers driving Hiluxes and drinking cappuccinos. I would boss the bosses and the bosses would boss the workers. But what do the bosses know about the work? Well, they know a bit, but the workers know it better. Three years ago is probably the biggest changes was thinning out the top of the company, taking away our managers and letting our people do what they do best, which is their job close to the job. No idea is a dumb idea. We try it, it doesn't work, we try something else. The culture is a little bit different now. There's um, no leaders, so everybody's got a say and everyone's got a voice. The people actually get to make big decisions about the job. Now I feel like everybody's one. You know, we're all seen as, uh, as equals. No, cancel that. Copy. Uh... Back in the day, I, like every other employer, would look for the most experienced, most qualified person I could find. And we ended up inadvertently hiring some real dickheads. Now we are entirely different. I really don't care what you know or what you've done. I care absolutely about the type of person you are. Less mahi, more money, and we're going to pull this off. I don't know how we do it, but I know we're going to do it. We can outpace inflation three to one. Jacob knows every person here. He makes a point of asking them how they are, how's your family, and actually cares. So that's the big story, that's the big plan. I started with KFL straight out of school. I was 16 years old. School's not for everyone, so found out that KFL was looking for workers. I come in the following day and Jacob's ACES looked after me ever since. Two years into me being here, I become team leader of the biggest team we had here. Jacob likes to work with MSD and with the Kawara community. I've seen quite a few come through that are really down they don't feel like they are much, but then you give them a chance and you bring them into your whānau here and they start realising, man, I'm, I'm pretty all right. We upskill them and before you know it, we have this person who is so proud of who they are because if we can change anybody's life and give them a chance they might not normally get, you help their whole family. This is my first job. I like learning the machines, driving the loaders. Four and a half months later and now I'm driving one of the <laughs> our biggest and finest loaders on the yard. When you come here, trust isn't earned with Jacob. He will give you 100% of his trust straight away. You naturally feel quite important. Here's the head of the company telling you, I trust you. Some people don't ever hear that from any boss they work with. So to get that straight away, wow, I'm, I'm valued here. My boss trusts me and I haven't even done anything for him yet. Man, I'm going to work hard. What I've seen changed is um, um, how Jacob sees us now compared to back then. He's like one of the lads now. No, not a boss sort of thing. Yeah. I've you know, needed time off for personal reasons. Jacob never asks. He just says, as long as you're okay, I'm here and you get to go. Not many industries give a shit what goes on behind your door. Especially when I had my younger kids, I was always able to be with my kids when I needed to. It's family orientated. I feel a part of this place. It's more like a family than actually a workplace. One big happy family. <laughs> and the people. <laughs> yeah, I like the people. The French. Got a good team here, good bunch of fellas who work good. Oh, in the hills. Ah, it's awesome, me. It's cool, awesome. That's why I'm still here. Good happy place, good teamwork. Ah, cool place. Yeah. Not just the team or work partners, but as a family. Fanaungatanga, so the Fano between all of us. Very close, we always um, have choirs and all that together. Yeah, me and the other bros are having a competition. He's got the best cheesecake. <laughs> I gave my one last week, 
and that'll hype them up for a cheesecake competition. <laughs> Jacob offers us all $500 a year to go to the dentist. We can get whatever's done and he'll cover it. Uh, we also have an independent um, counsellor. Her number is on the bottom of our pay slips and we just get to ring. We got rid of sick leave and introduced wellness leave. We doubled the uh, government entitlements. We have psychologists to uh, meet with them every fortnight, those who needed some help. We have life coaches come in, talk about mindfulness and meditation. Seeing and putting all that effort back into the people has really transformed KFL. It's made it more productive, it's made it a better place to work. Actually all parameters, all metrics are through the roof at the moment. The company itself has become more of a place where to nurture people and to bring people up and not so much of just a place where you're just using people and just getting results out of them like all companies do. It's really cool seeing the community here being uplifted by the work being done here by KFL. And I've never felt that, or never been able to say that before. I've always sort of gone, oh, we'll go to places, we'll do the work, and that's pretty much it. But here we're doing the work and we're helping people too. The only thing that matters, the only thing that matters is the people. We're not just making a business better and better and better. We're making people's lives better. I'm making my own life better. We love what we do. You know, it's uh, forestry and logistics, we love it. But the thing I am most proud of is the way we do it.